If you're one of the millions of people who've taken a DNA test through 23andMe, but you're left scratching your head wondering what all those ethnicity percentages mean, you're in the right place. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Your DNA with Diane Southerd. The very first thing that you need to do when you get to your 23andMe results is figure out where in the world that they put your ethnicity results. I think navigation is one of the biggest problems that we're facing at 23andMe. There's just so much information. So if you wanna get at your ethnicity results, there's a couple different places you can go. First of all, you can click on this top button right here where it says Ancestry, and that will take you there. You can also click in the navigation at the bottom in the quick links section, and that will also take you to your ethnicity results. The problem is there's this intermediary page where it's giving you a summary of your ethnicity results, which can be helpful, but when you really just wanna jump in, you've gotta click again on this button, view your ancestry composition. That's what 23andMe calls your ethnicity results. It's called ancestry composition. So when you get there, you're going to get another menu. Now, this menu can be really important. It helps you dig a lot deeper into your results if you're interested. Don't feel like you have to, but that scientific details tab, I think is pretty amazing. And they've actually done a really good job writing it. So if you have any inclination at all that you wanna know a little bit more about how they're doing this kind of work, jump into that scientific details tab. If not, no worries, just delve right here into the summary. So in the summary page, you're going to be faced with two ways to view your data. You can view it on the map or you can view it just as percentages. So of course, both are giving you the same information. One's just a little bit prettier than the other one. It's important to know that in this section that there are different kinds of regions that 23andMe is revealing to you. Now, theoretically, all of them have something to do with your heritage, but it's not always the case, right? So we want to understand which locations are the most reliable, which are the most valuable, which are the ones that are telling me the best information. So it helps to think of your ethnicity regions in these three categories of regions. They first have these really broad general regions. These are going to be the most accurate because they're the most general. So they're also the least exciting, unfortunately. But if you wanna be accurate, then stick to these very high level regions, regions like Northwestern European and Southern European. Those are going to give you the best description of where you're from generally. The next kind of regions are going to be more country or mostly country, but region specific. So that's your French and German, that's your Scandinavian, that's your Italian. And these are useful, but they aren't always completely accurate, right? They're telling you you're from these places, you may or may not be, but they're really good places to start looking for your heritage. So there's a lot of factors that go into accuracy in these results, but for the most part, they're getting a lot better at it. And you can be confident that you're from these places, but perhaps the percentages aren't exactly precise. That's probably the best way for you to think about it. But these regions reflect your heritage back the last maybe thousand years or so. So it could be a really, really long time ago that you're from one of these places. The best kind of regions, in my opinion, especially if you're into this for genealogy purposes, are these really specific regions. These regions are meant to tell you a lot of really detailed information about where you should be looking for your ancestors. So if you click on one of those regions, you're going to find a nice map that tells you a lot more detail about that particular region. So this is my map for Germany, and you can see that Germany has been broken up into 16 what they call administrative regions, but they're not just for administration, they're for your genetics as well. 23andMe has done enough research that they can see genetic distinctions between these 16 areas of Germany, which let's just take a minute and just be in complete awe that that actually happens and it works. And, and I've seen data, I know that this does work, but it takes a lot of data. And so 23andMe has been able to gather that data and give us some really specific information about where our ancestors are from. 
So if you see an administrative region like this in one of your ethnicity regions, those represent where your ancestors could have been in the last 200 years, which is that genealogy sweet spot that we're all trying to capture. We're all trying to document our ancestors in that specific timeline. So this is a really, really good way to get some hints about where your ancestors may have been from. So you also want to pay attention to the confidence that, that 23andMe has in this assignment. They have all this stuff going on in the back end, and they're trying to reveal it to you with this really simple category. Are you a highly likely match to this region? Or as you can see here, uh, are you only a possible match to this region? So pay attention to those. That's, that's 23andMe trying to give you a heads up about what's going on on their back end. Now, if you scroll down underneath that map and percentages, there's a lot of other information you can gather about your results. And some of these things are more fascinating than others, and it depends on kind of where you sit on the timeline of, um, of science, if you think this kind of stuff is cool, or there's other things like food and travel information right here on this page. But you'll wanna explore all of these options. 23andMe is trying to deliver you information that you might find interesting. So for example, I think this part is interesting because I like history and I like to think about the movements of people and how it's affected our genetics. I also like this page, which tells me about people in America and about people in America who have this French and German ancestry. And it tells me by state how many states have more of this particular ancestry. I find that kind of thing fascinating, but there's so much information in these pages for you to scroll through and click on and read that you're bound to find something that's interesting, even if you don't think the two things I picked out were particularly interesting. So if you're looking again at these ethnicity results, there are three different regions, but the or three different categories of regions, but I think the specific regions are the most valuable if you're trying to do genealogy. Now, what you also want to do is check out these, all of their reference populations. So reference populations are the groups of people they're comparing you against. So it's important to know what groups they even have in their database so you know if they can tell you if you're from that region. So if you click on that view all reference populations, you can see it's going to start by showing me my own results. And you can see in that uh, French and German category, it lists a lot of other specific regions where my DNA is not mapping to. So sometimes it's just as important to know where you're not from as it is to know where you are from. You can also switch over on that top tab and go to all reference populations and you can see different individuals who are from uh, different places. And you're able to see, sorry, you know, when you're home, lots of things happen. It's all good, right? Um, these reference populations, the reference databases, they tell you how many different people are in each of these reference populations. That gives you an idea of the database size and kind of what's going on at 23andMe and how you can assess if their reference population is really robust or not. So after you click on see all the reference populations and you get a feel for where you're not from and you've reviewed all the information about where you are from, if you scroll down just below that map, you're going to see another map of sorts, it's a timeline, and it tells you when your ancestors were in these areas. This is a really important aspect of these results because you may see places on your, on your ethnicity results that you don't recognize at all. For example, Finnish, Spanish and Portuguese, Italian, those are locations that do not exist in my family tree at this time. And so when you see them in your ethnicity results, you might be thinking, there's something wrong, I'm not from those places, or am I really from those places and my genealogy's wrong? Well, it turns out those locations are just pushed further back in time, which means I may not ever find a name to go with that particular place. On the contrary, these other places, this French and German, the Scandinavian, the British and Irish, 23andMe can see that those places have a stronger signal in my DNA, meaning that they came much earlier. Um, or much later, however you wanna look at it, those ancestors I can actually find names for that are from those places. So I think this timeline is a really important way to assess that big map to see which locations may be the most important to you depending on your goals. Uh, if you're looking for genealogy, well then you might wanna focus on the places that are more recent. If you're interested in, in deep migrations and, and distant ancestors, well then you might be more interested in those later locations. So, 
whew, that's kind of a whirlwind tour, and I've got a to-do list for you. Because after every time you learn something, unless you go and do something, you'll forget it. So here's my to-do list after taking a look at your 23andMe results. First of all, recognize that there are all these different kinds of regions and go through for yourself and, and point them out and see, okay, these are the big ones, these are the most accurate, and then we've got these country specific, and then I've got these location specific. Pay close attention to those very specific regions. Also, look at that big list of reference populations. Understand where you're not from, as that can actually really impact the way that you're looking at your family history. And my last bit of advice always is click on everything. Always click on everything. There's so much to learn. These websites are packed with information, especially at 23andMe. Don't be afraid, you're not gonna break it. Just click on everything and you might be surprised at what you learn. So I'm interested to hear how this goes. Please leave me a note in the comments, um, reach out to us and let us know what questions you have or what success you've had with your ethnicity results at 23andMe.